Welcome back. So this is prep talk number two about our carnivore challenge that we're going to all do together. If you missed the prep talk number one, click here and watch that video first because it tees all this up and you don't want to miss it. Then come on back and we'll do this together. Since you came back for prep talk number two, that means that I either one, piqued your curiosity, two, you're so excited that you can't wait for August 12th, or three, you're a little skeptical, so you want to see how crazy I really am. <laughs> and any of those are fine. We will get through this together, and I promise I have a lot more information to share with you today. So I'm trying to do this in bits and pieces so it's not so overwhelming because this is actually a very easy way of eating. The first 30 days is the easiest part of all. Easy from the perspective of there's not a whole lot of things that you need to do and preparations and weighing and measuring and all that kind of stuff. It's very simple from that perspective. What may be difficult is giving up some of your favorite carb heavy foods and some of your vegetables and fruits that you're used to or those donuts and cookies <laughs> and pop and things like that. We want to make sure that this is a healthy way of eating. Today, I hope to share with you the basics of this program, what we need to do, what we need to eat, how much we need to eat of it. And I'm going to go over it pretty quickly. And then each week we'll build on that. And then by the end, by August 12th, which is really the beginning, it's the start of the challenge, we will have enough information to go at this with our best foot forward. And that's what my hope is. And that's why I wanted to stall this until August 12th so that we could spend some time together getting to understand this way of eating. So let's dive into this. So what is a carnivore lifestyle or carnivore way of eating? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. We are going to eat things that come from animals in its purest form or at least minimally processed. What does that mean? That means we are going to eat things like meats, eggs, and fats that come from animals. So what that means we're not going to eat are things that come from plants and things that are highly processed. So we'll eat meats that come from animals. Primarily beef. Beef has the best overall health profile from a food perspective. So it's got the perfect amino acids, it's got really good vitamins and minerals. So that's why you'll hear a lot in this carnivore community, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And a lot of people use an acronym called BBBE, and it stands for beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Because in your first 30 days, if you can eat just that, you will do phenomenally well. Beef is really, really good for you. Now, if you can't tolerate beef or for whatever reason, have some sort of an aversion to beef, there are other meats you can eat. You can literally eat any meats. The reason why beef is so good is it's got the perfect balance of proteins and fats. And like I said, a great amino acid profile, all the vitamins and minerals you could need. That's why we choose beef. What are some other meats that you can eat? If you don't like to eat just beef and it gets a little boring for you, you can add lamb, you can add veal, you can add pork. You can add chicken and turkey. I would just tell you to be a little careful there because those are very lean meats. And this diet is not about eating what we've all been told <laughs> as we grew up. For those of you that are as old as me, we had a very long low fat phase where the government came out and said, oh, fat is bad. For those of you, that is not what this is. Fat is actually really good for you. It's really good for your hormones. It's what's gonna give us energy and make us feel amazing. So we are not going to sacrifice fat on this. We're gonna prioritize protein as well because protein really makes everything in our bodies work. It builds our bones and our muscles and our skin and our hair and it does all those things. It's just not a really good source of energy. So fat and carbs, we'll have a little bit of carbs, not very much. We really don't need it and it stimulates our appetites a little bit. So we're gonna try and stay away from carbs if we're trying to lose weight. If you are doing this because you wanna feel amazing, you wanna have more energy, you wanna have better hormones, if you want to get rid of those aches and pains that I talked about in my first prep talk, you can eat a little bit more carbs. Just realize that carbs tend to stimulate your appetite. So if you eat a plate of pasta, you're typically hungry soon after that. Or if you eat 
cookies. You can never just eat one because carbs stimulate your appetite. And that's why we tend to overeat them. And we're always hungry when we eat them. They're kind of a vicious little food. I heard from two guys that wrote a book, your body will tell you it's full once you've met your protein requirements. So your body has a set inside of it that says we need this amount of protein and we'll talk about that in a minute but we need a certain amount of protein to get all these things done or our body does and to maintain itself and until we get that we're going to keep being hungry so once you've met your protein needs of your body then you will typically not feel as hungry again if you eat carbs which your body doesn't need then that could stimulate your appetite. So just be careful with those carbs. One a protein I did not mention is fish. You can also eat fish, the fattier the better. So salmon is a good choice. Fish doesn't have as perfect of a profile as maybe beef does, but you can always add stuff together. So have a little piece of salmon and a piece of steak, or just make sure you get beef some other time during the day. So we'll talk about what those meals can cut like. Okay, so I mentioned before what we don't eat, but let me go into a little bit more detail about that. So we don't want to eat anything that comes from plants. And from a girl who was on a whole food plant-based diet before this, I'm sure there's those of you out there that no vegetarians or vegans, I wasn't to that extreme, but I was trying to eat less processed foods. Those are not part of this plan. So again, we're gonna eat things that come from animals. That includes the fats that I was talking about. We wanna eat fats that come from animals. So we'll take butter, ghee, and beef tallow. Those are the kinds of fats that we're going to eat. And any of the fats that come from meats and fish. What we're not going to eat are any of the oils that come from plants. And those are like our seed oils, like canola oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, any of those that are highly processed oils, we will not be eating those. So just a quick story about plants. There is a doctor by the name of Dr. Anthony Chafee, and I will link his information in the description box below. Dr. Anthony Chafee is a doctor who is also a carnivore. And one of the things that he talks about a lot is that when he was in medical school, one of his professors told them all that plants are trying to kill you. And he talks about it in a lot of his talks because he kind of chalked it up at the beginning, but this, and this doctor was adamant that plants are really trying to kill you. And he goes on to explain that plants have mechanisms inside and outside of them to protect them from dying. And usually that's from predators like humans or animals that are trying to eat them. So they have lots of things in them that are trying to prolong their life. And so those things can make us very ill and unwell. <laughs> Some of it just is in the form of bloat, but a lot of it's in the form of poisons that go into your body that make those aches and pains and disrupt our hormones and things like that. So go see Dr. Anthony Chafee's videos. I would highly recommend them. He is fantastic to listen to. He has transformed his body and his lifestyle just by going carnivore as well. When I figured out it was the plants that were causing my aches and pains, it was a little life altering. As I mentioned in the first video, I started on this way of eating with my husband on an RV trip because he could not stop talking about it. He was so excited about how he was feeling and the energy he had and the lack of pain. And then he told me that he wasn't hungry, which if you know my husband, he's always hungry. I was like, wait a minute, I need to take note here. <laughs> I need to maybe think about this. And he said, this is such an easy diet. You can start it today on this RV trip. And so I did. And I started eating the things that he was eating. And it's easy. You can do it in an RV. You can do it in your home life. You can do it on the go. So this is a very easy way of eating. On about day three or four, I woke up and I said, I didn't hurt getting out of bed. My knees, my back, and my hands have given me pain for probably the last five years. Uh, my back probably longer than that. And so I'm used to getting out of bed feeling like a little creaky, everything kind of hurts a little bit. And I woke up that morning and I was like, my hands don't hurt, my knees don't hurt, my back doesn't hurt. Like what's going on? And sometimes I, I've heard people say that they, it takes them like a while to realize like, hey, wait a minute. Because if you don't have it, it's kind of one of those things, you, if you know when you have it, <laughs> when you don't have it, you kind of maybe take it for granted or don't realize it. 
And so when I realized it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what Mike was talking about, my husband, Mike. When this happens to you, I want you to share it with us. I want you to comment on the video that I have just put out and say, you know, I am pain-free today because it is one of the things about this way of eating that is different than any other way of eating, in my opinion. Again, I am not a doctor. All I've done is a bunch of research. I've done this diet for a year and it has worked really well for me, and it's done more than just help me lose weight. That's why I feel like this is a sustainable way of eating. You're not deprived. You're eating enough to sustain you. You are not feeling like you're hungry all the time. You're not eating a little bit of lettuce and then starving the rest of the day. This is something where you're gonna feel sustained. You're gonna feel like you're full enough, and you're actually gonna start listening to your body, and your body's gonna tell you when you're full, and your body's gonna tell you when you've had enough protein and had enough fat and all of those things. It's amazing. It's almost like your body's like, yes, now you get it. <laughs> I've been trying to tell you, but you keep eating carbs and plants and all these things that really we were intended to eat. And that's kind of the beauty of this carnivore diet. So no plants, and that includes fruit and veg. So a lot of you are going to say, hmm, gosh, are we getting enough vitamins and minerals then? And the answer is, I looked into all of it. There are a few people that say you may not be getting enough vitamin C. But I've also seen and read studies where it says beef has as much vitamin C as most fruits and vegetables. If you're concerned, take a multivitamin. It couldn't hurt, you know, don't overdo a multivitamin, take a multivitamin if that's gonna make you feel better. But I haven't seen anybody get scurvy. <laughs> on this diet, it's not like you're going to be deficient in vitamin C to it, to that level. Again, beef has it and other proteins have vitamin C in it. We'll be tracking some of this and you'll see that you don't need to be concerned. You're going to feel better than you have in a very long time. The one thing that you may get deficient in, especially at the beginning, is electrolytes. And electrolytes are simply minerals that your body needs to maintain. It's They maintain a level. And electrolytes are sodium, potassium and magnesium. Many of you probably know that most Americans and humans are terribly deficient in magnesium. You need to take an electrolyte or check with your doctor if you don't think you can take an electrolyte. Check with your doctor before you start this diet. If you listen to any of the doctors in the carnivore community, they all suggest you take an electrolyte. And the reason for that is because you don't have carbs in your body which are holding on to all that your excess water. You're going to kind of pee all that excess water out when you get rid of the carbs in your system. And when your body starts using fat for its energy, you won't need all that water in your body. And what that does is that can disrupt your electrolytes. You're going to need to replenish those electrolytes for a period of time. And one of the ways you realize that your electrolytes are a little bit out of balance is you can start getting muscle cramps. And I got them in my legs in the first few weeks of carnivore. I read about it and found out that that is a simple fix. You just take electrolytes. I use an electrolyte called LMNT. A lot of people pronounce it element. It's got an unflavored version that I think is good for your first 30 days on carnivore. You do want to look at any electrolyte that you purchase and make sure that the ingredients are clean. You really just want sodium, magnesium, and potassium. And there's some versions of magnesium that are better for nighttime. Some are better, more energizing and better for the daytime. So we'll get into that in another video. My husband takes something called Keto 1000. It's off of Amazon as well. And that's an unflavored form of electrolytes. And he likes it because he doesn't taste it. He says it's not terribly gritty. You can also just make your own. So if you want to purchase potassium, sodium, and magnesium, I have a recipe that I'll put in the description box below. Again, you click on the dot, dot, dot more, and it'll open up the description box and all the information that I'm sharing with you today that I keep talking about is in the description box will be there. Electrolytes, those are important. And that's probably the only thing that you may be initially deficient in. And your body eventually regulates itself out when it realizes you're not going to be introducing those carbs back in. You may eventually be able to wean yourself off. But most people on the carnivore diet continue electrolytes. I have, it makes me feel good. It gives me a little bit more energy. I'm able to just have a half a cup of coffee in the morning and not need anything else because my electrolytes kind of give me that pep in my stuff. I will tell you that there's a lot of carnivores out there that don't think coffee is good for you. So if you want to get rid of coffee on top of your carbs and veg and fruits and pop and things like that, 
go for it. If you can get rid of that, do it. I've heard lots of great things about how it can make you feel a lot better. For me, it's more of a ritual for me that I enjoy. I am kind of a go, go, go person. And my cup of coffee in the morning is the time when I'm sort of like, mm, my coffee and I sit and I have my dogs on my lap. Three of my dogs usually sit with me first thing in the morning. And then, you know, after that coffee is done, I kind of jump into life. For me, it means that it's my morning. It's my time to get settled before my day takes off and I'm running, running, running. Do what you need to do there and do some research on coffee. Again, I'm giving the bare bones minimum <laughs> of what carnivore is so we can get started with our best foot forward. But I also would like for you to do your own research. And so again, I'm going to give you the names of some carnivore doctors that have YouTube channels that you can watch or that have books that you can read. And that will make you more well-rounded with this because because I, I'm telling you, after the first 30 days, when you start to feel amazing and your hormones start to get balanced and your aches and pains go away and you start to lose a little bit of weight, and not everybody loses weight in the first 30 days. Because if your body has a lot of healing to do, sometimes people don't lose weight in the first 30 days, but you get your body ready to lose weight. And you, that those people typically drop a lot of it in the second 30 days or the third 30 days. I say that this is a 30 day challenge just because once you've done it for 30 days, you're not gonna wanna go back you're not going to want to go back to what you felt like before you went carnivore. So that's why the 30 day challenge is kind of more of a teaser because once you've done it, like I did it 90 days hardcore, then I started to go a little bit keto, ketovore after the first 90 days. With the electrolytes, one other thing you want to keep in mind are the other ingredients. So you want to make sure that you have unflavored electrolytes if you can manage that. If you really need something sweet, then I would say Element has stevia in their flavored electrolytes, and that is usually okay for some people. The problem is, is you probably haven't checked your blood sugar and how it reacts to different foods, so you really don't know if stevia is something that affects you positively or negatively. If stevia in your body causes your blood sugar to rise, then it's not something that you want to use on this diet. It just can derail you a little bit. Until we get further along in the process, I would suggest an unflavored, unsweetened electrolyte supplement. The bottom line is we are going to eat meats and eggs as protein and it has some fat in those too as well. And then we're going to eat fat and a little bit of carbs because there's carbs in meats and eggs too. Not as much as you'd think, but there are in some of them. There's not a lot of carbs in straight fats. We'll have a few carbs but it's going to be seriously low con compared to what you're used to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to calculate a little bit. And so what I'm going to do in today's video is just kind of tell you the basics of what we're going to do. So we're going to eat meats and eggs, and we're going to eat fat as well. And some of that fat will come from the meat and eggs, but some we will also add to it. And the reason for that is because fat is going to be our new energy source. We're not gonna get the energy from our carbs anymore. We're gonna teach our bodies to use fat for our fuel, for our energy. And then we're gonna prioritize protein because protein does all the things in your body that your body needs to survive. You're gonna have protein kind of on one side and on the other side, we're gonna have the fat and the fat is gonna be the energy that keeps everything running, but protein builds all your muscles and bones and skin and hair and all that kind of stuff. With all of that said, you're probably wondering how much do I need? So I'm going to barely touch on this and then my next video I'm going to go into numbers and I'm going to give you examples of what a day's worth of food would look like for you. Now you and I may look different. You and I may weigh different amounts. You may be very skinny and just looking to heal your hormones and heal some of those aches and pains and just heal your body overall with food. You have different needs for protein and fat than I do. You may weigh more than I do and you may need to lose a significant amount of weight. And so your amounts that you're going to eat are going to look different than mine are going to look different from the person sitting next to you. With that said, I'm going to give you some guidelines. In the carnivore community, I will be honest with you, there is a lot of discussion about how much you should be eating and what percentage of fat and what percentage of protein. What I have done with all of that, because it can get a little bit brain numbing with everybody with their opinions, is I found that people, and I should say the medical professionals and the doctors in the carnivore community, and also people that have been on this diet for most of their lives. A lot of people have been on this diet for five, 10, 15 years. And so I've, those are the kind of people that 
when I've read about them and I've watched their videos, generally I have found that most of them are saying that we need one gram of protein for pound of ideal body weight. So it's a one for one. Say I weigh 200 pounds and I want to get to an ideal body weight. And you know, I'm not pulling that number out of the sky. I'm looking at a BMI chart or my doctor says, you know, I want you to be 150 pounds. So say 150 pounds is my ideal body weight. Then I would want one gram of protein per pound of that ideal body weight. So if 150 pounds is my ideal body weight, then I will want 150 grams of protein per day. When you do your research, you will see that some say it's 0.8 grams and most of them are a little bit higher. A lot of them say one gram, but some of them say 1.2 grams per pound of ideal body weight. Some say 1.5 grams. And it kind of depends on what your lifestyle is like. So if you're a bodybuilder, you need a little bit more protein than somebody like me that works out three days a week. If you're very, very sedentary, then you may not need even one gram. But I think one gram is a very safe number. I am not a doctor, so you need to go to your doctor and, and determine this or do your research like I did and determine what works for you. Assuming that we all want to do one gram per pound of ideal body weight for protein, that is not grams of meat. That's grams of protein. As an example, a ribeye is made up of protein, fat, and maybe carbs. When you say I need 150 grams of protein a day, it's not 150 grams of ribeye. It is, it's gonna be less than that. It's less, as an example, a six ounce ribeye has 42 grams of protein in it. Four slices of bacon have 16 grams of protein in it. Six eggs have 38 grams of protein. So it's not gonna be gram for gram of a meat. Gram of a meat equals a gram of protein. It's much less than that. So, don't get nervous that 150 grams of ribeye is going to be all you can eat for the day. It's probably 50-50 protein and fat or somewhere around that. How do you figure out what that is? Well, there's a bunch of ways. And for those of you that are starting to go, oh my gosh, she's going to make me start calculating stuff. Let me tell you, you don't need to. I didn't calculate for the first 30 days. I wished I had because I think I was under eating a little bit at the beginning and then I think I was overeating a little bit towards the end, starting to listen to different people and they were like, oh, you're not eating enough fat. So then I'd eat more fat and then I wasn't prioritizing protein and I had no idea what I should be eating. So this is just gonna give you a general idea so that you don't start to go, is this enough? Am I eating too much? It's gonna just give you a good idea. What you can do and what I did for this video is I went online and I, in Google, or you can use a search engine of your choice. I put in how many grams of protein are in, in six eggs, or how many grams of protein are in six ounces of raw ribeye. You need to specify if it's raw or if it's cooked. You know what you're measuring when you're measuring it. So if you haven't cooked your food yet and it weighs six ounces, then that's raw. You can also use an app on your phone. They have MyFitnessPal, they have Carb Manager. There's all sorts of nutrition calculators out there. And sometimes those are nice to use for a little bit of time too, until you're comfortable. Because with carnivore, you're gonna figure out your favorite things that you like to eat, and you're gonna eat them all the time. And I'm not saying that it's gonna get boring where you're like, uh, ground beef, ground beef, <laughs> you know. But you're probably gonna have, like a typical day might be a few eggs in the morning with a few slices of bacon. At lunch, you might have that ground beef or maybe a beef patty. And then for dinner, you might have a steak or some salmon and some turkey. What you wanna just make sure is that you're not under eating. We're so used to a calorie deficit in dieting that that is not what this is. So we wanna make sure we're getting enough protein so our body is working optimally and we're getting enough fat so that we have the energy so we're not slug sitting on the couch. So we're going to get that one gram per pound of ideal body weight in protein. Here's where it gets kind of messy. People have all sorts of different amounts of fat and carbs that you should eat. 
along with that protein. Some say, you know, you need 60% from fat and 40% from protein. Some say it's 50-50. Some say it's as high as 80% fat and 20% protein. I think it's closer to the 50-50. But I also think that you need to measure your energy and then you measure your protein. And that has been fairly consistent amongst the doctors and professionals that I have researched with, with the books and the YouTube videos that I've watched. And I'm telling you, I've done hundreds and hundreds of hours <laughs> of watching this because once I got into this, I was like, okay, how am I gonna do this the best way I can? And what are the things that I'm doing wrong? Because I just kind of jumped in and I didn't really know what I was doing. With that said, I think the easiest way to do this, and I think it's gonna be good for you until you've really honed into what your body needs, is I would aim for the one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. And I would, I would try and get one gram of fat plus carbs of your ideal body weight. So if it's that 150 pounds, it's 150 grams of protein, 150 fat plus carb grams. In the next video, which is coming out in just a couple days, I'm going to show you what a day would look like and I'm going to have different scenarios and I'm going to put in there, you know, like I said, if if you're having the eggs and bacon in the morning and then you're having hamburger meat for lunch and then you're having a ribeye or you're having salmon or you're having whatever you're having for dinner, I'm going to show you how to make sure it all works. We're going to prioritize that protein, make sure we're getting enough, and then we're going to make sure if we're a little bit deficient on the fat you want that fat to be at least at your protein level in grams. And if we're not getting it in the food that we're eating, we're going to supplement a little bit with some butter, with some ghee, with, with some beef tallow, whatever it needs to be. But we're going to put some fat in our stuff. And who doesn't like a little bit of butter in their eggs or a little bit of butter in there? <laughs> Try butter in your ground beef. Mm, it's good. It's good. This is what's going to happen with all of this. You're going to feel satisfied, you're going to have the energy you need, and your body is going to work well. That's enough for today. I've talked a lot, <laughs> and I appreciate everybody's patience. I hope that you're still interested. I hope you're still getting excited because you should. We're all going to have some really good health stories to share from this, and I think with us sharing what's working well and what's not working well, because we're all very different, all of our bodies are slightly different, we're going to help each other be the best we can be on this way of eating. Until the next one, I will include the playlist at the end of the video to all of the carnivore prep talks. And then once we get into the plan on August 12th of 2024, when we kick this off, I will also include all of those videos in the carnivore playlist. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you know when this content comes out. And I'm putting content out weekly on the carnivore challenge and these prep talks. Then you can also see some of my other fun videos about whatever I'm doing in my semi-retirements. Check it all out. Click the like button if you enjoyed this content. I'm really trying to do the best I can by putting bits and pieces together for you. So by the time we get to August 12th, you guys are going to be all ready to go and you're going to be like, I know what I'm doing. And then we're going to be able to go on this journey together. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining today. Bye.